Hi family, it's December 10th, 2020. It's been one crazy year, but we decided that we wanted to share with you what we've been doing since we've been recovering from the COVID virus. We've been setting up our nativities around our house and in front of our house. We're starting with the one that we set outdoors. This is the one we purchased in Morton and brought here and we're kind of excited the way it looks. Now we'll go into the house, and I'm excited to have you with us. I wish you were all here. Um, here we are, 15 Bluff Park. Welcome. So I'm pleased that the family wanted to see some of our nativities. We're going to go slow and show you what we have, and you can go fast forward if you want. And here we go, right from the very beginning is one of our small ones. This one came from Jerusalem. It's a little teeny nativity made out of olive wood. Moving across, we have two nativities that I bought in the Czech Republic. About the time that I was visiting my friend Sharon Wilkinson, they had a wonderful apartment, a penthouse actually, above the store where we purchased these corn husk and this, this one that comes apart. I think I gave many of you this one from the Czech Republic. Moving down over here, we have one that I purchased with your dad and Sharon Wilkinson in the Black Forest in Germany. It's a puzzle, little pieces come out of the wood. You can see, I'll turn it around so you can see the back but we never take them out because I'm just afraid I'll break them or lose them. So that's kind of that one. Next to it is one we purchased in 2000. I got the card here on the ground. Purchased in Charleston, North Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina with Julia's family when we flew there on, with, on dad's airplane. We took the Anderson kids and we all flew there. So that when I look at that, you might think you'd think of um, Jerusalem, but that's not Jerusalem. It's olive wood from South Carolina. Moving down here is this one is one of my very favorites, probably not the most expensive at all, but one of my favorites. I purchased it in 2006 in Nauvoo in a little store called the Christmas store. It's made out of sheet metal painted. I always found it a little strange that Angel was so low, so I stuck her up on the flowers. And I, I like her there, but I love this one. It doesn't break, and it tells the story. It's just the flow of the art of the metal. This one I bought with my friend Sharon. We went to Auschwitz in Poland which was near Krakow. So we stayed in Krakow when we went to Auschwitz. And we bought this at a little market. I remember it's a very rainy day. It was the market in Town Square. Bought it with Sharon. It was a cold day. But I, I liked it because it's hand carved wood. Did I say the date? Uh, I didn't say the date. 2014, sorry. There we go. Moving right along. I love this picture here, Liz Swindle painted. Liz Swindle stayed at our Navu house. It's such a beautiful card that we framed it and gave it to my friends one year, probably the early two, 2000s. This one came from Betty, the musical Silent Night. Betty and I 
started exchanging nativities years ago. I don't know that she was really into them until I started giving her pictures and such. But this is one she gave me. Thank you. And then over here, last year I purchased the um, Greg Olson cards and the Greg Olson nativity puzzle. And to me, that's part of celebrating Christmas with the nativity. We'll move quickly to this one. This one is a children's one. It's full of little things, little ornaments that the children can play with and hang on a Christmas tree. I think I got it from Betty. I'm not positive, but it's kind of cute. I don't worry about it too much. This block ornament da -da, is one that I um, received at a high council Christmas party in 2011. And since then, I've received two other block ones like that. And I really thought they were cute. One of them, Amber gave me that she made, and I just apologized to her yesterday to tell her that I really loved them, but I didn't need three. And being that she was a practical girl she was, she would understand that I gave it to a neighbor for Christmas, so I can't show it to you. But it was very much like this one. Anyway, so that's that. Cynthia Clark gave that to me in 2011. This nativity came from Betty and Jean. Not sure what year. It's made out of metal. It's beautiful. And this next one came from Betty and Jean also many years ago. I think when we first moved to Morton. And I understood that her father made it. That could be wrong, but I think I'd like to say that he did. And it's something that we've treasured because it's from the Nelsons. This sweet video, on uh, video, this sweet nativity came from Bethlehem, Israel, and Brian and Joanna gave it to us in 2014. I suspect they purchased it someplace like Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, not Bethlehem, Israel, but it's very sweet. The small figures all in olive wood. Told me the year. I'm trying to remember the year that Julia just told me that they bought this. 2006. 2006. Um, in Ukraine, when Dale's parents were mission presidents in Ukraine, they visited there and they brought back this nativity. It's stacking ornament. It's stacking um, pieces to nesting. the nesting pieces to the Holy Family. And so there's the Holy Family, the wise men, the shepherds, the dove, and the angel. All stacked inside each other. It's beautiful. Appreciate it. Get closer. In 2009, Julia made this one. Um, I love it. Wise men still seek him that you put on the floor or anywhere in your home. I thought it was lovely. Over here in our living room is our Italian table. All of these we purchased in Italy and they have special significance to me in different ways. I'll start off with probably the first one I purchased, which actually is after the Christ child was born. This one over here, I purchased it in Rome, right across the street from the Vatican in a shop that sold nativities and lots of other religious items. I love the way it tells about Joseph and Mary, kind of goes right up here, Dave, with the picture that Ugo and Jenna gave me in, nine, what did I say, 2011? I love it, I keep this one up all year long. And this picture I've seen in a number of temples, so it's, it's just pretty special by uh, Brinkley. But last name is Brinkley. In 2014, um, David and I went to the island of Capri. Capri. And before we went there, we went to the town of Sorrento, Italy. And there was this lovely shop with beautiful um, nativities. So we splurged and purchased this beautiful one. I like the white wood. 
those. Some of them have are painted. I like, we bought the one with the white wood and had it shipped home to us. On our Italian table, we have three very small ones up front. The very tiniest one in the very front was purchased in a, on an island near Venice by Julia and Jenna in 2015. It's hand-blown glass. How would you do something that miniature? I have no idea. But it was very sweet that they purchased it, even sweeter that they were able to get it back to me without it breaking. It's gorgeous and we really appreciate it. Behind it are two other small nativities. Um, the one with the star Jenna gave to me. She purchased it on her birthday when we went to the monastery in San Saint Benedicto, I think is what it was called. Up in a mountain built, this monastery is built on the, out of a cliff. It's very, very old. I can't remember the dates, but it was very impressive. And they had a gift shop and Jenna purchased that little star for me with a nativity. And I purchased the Christmas tree. I think I may have given her one, the one to the left of the star. These were from the same St. Benedic Benedicto in Italy, and it was in 2018. This Native American nativity is a gift from Jeff and Rachel and the boys, and I guess Rosalind too. And they gave it to us when, in honor of the teepees that I had made for many of the, all of you grandchildren. This wooden nativity we've had since the 1970s. The children played with it for years and years. It's survived the test of time. It's gone to schools and churches. It's made of wood little figures. I purchased it from Lillian Vernon catalog. It was so priced right that I bought one for each of my siblings. And it's been a favorite. It just seems to survive. Hope you enjoy. This one over here is one that our neighbor made and I purchased one for our family in the early 80s and I purchased one for my siblings. You know that you've played with this over and over again, putting the puzzle together. And I've been excited to hear about how even the older families in our family have received the one that we sent this year that is similar to this and seem to enjoy putting it together. That's really significant to me. I love having nativities that the kids can play with, and I love watching how they place the pieces and think about the Savior. In 2015, we were in Spokane, Washington for the baptism of Grace McAllister. And at the bookstore there, I came across this lovely nativity, which was unusual, made in Kenya. And so I purchased it because I wanted to be able to remember how special it was that they, in Kenya, make such neat nativities. In 2007, this nativity was given to us following the stay of Vicki and Steve Christensen at our house, at our Navu house. I think we stayed with them um, so that we could talk and just socialize. She was in some of her later stages of brain cancer. That was hard for all of us, but it's very sweet to have this, to remember them. This nativity was purchased in England. We looked hard in many towns for a nativity that I thought would represent England, and it was very, very hard to find. So finally, we were in Cheshire, Chester, Chester, England, with Brian and Joanna when they were visiting us, and we were at a cathedral beautiful cathedral, and there in their gift shop, they had nativities. I believe it was made in Israel. It's made out of olive wood. I like the contemporary lines, and I love the simplicity. The basket here is full of small five-inch size Fontanini nativity pieces. I don't know that I appreciated what this was. Betty gave it to me. I think she bought it at a garage sale in a big set. It had a, a nativity, it had uh, grass, it was kind of tired, and so eventually I took and got rid of the nativity and kept the pieces so that grandchildren and anybody else that came to visit could
could assemble the cities of the birth of Jesus themselves using these uh, Fontanini figures from Italy. Above it is the piece that we purchased last year, I believe, in Utah of a Greg Olson fold-up collapsible nativity to remind us and to teach about what happened that first night of the Savior's birth. So I plopped it underneath this tree since we don't have a Christmas tree this year and put lights on it and feel really good about it. These two nativities were purchased in Morton, Illinois or acquired in Morton, Illinois. The first one on the left, it seems I wrote 2004, so that's probably right. A little teeny one. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of significance except that I like it. And the next one does have significance. It's an egg. Um, Renee Nava is kind of a character lady. We would visit her every year, and we gave her her first nativity. And then the, about the last year that we left, she gave us this one. It winds up. Silent Night, and you open it up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And there's a sweet little teeny nativity from Pekin, Illinois, Renee Nava. Yeah, I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> this laser nativity I acquired in Nauvoo, Illinois. It's probably about the same time I acquired the Oakland Temple laser walk. It has lights that go under it, and it's, it's pretty pretty. It was probably in the early 2000s. This um, nativity, this glass nativity, I believe Betty gave it to me, probably in the early 2000s also. I'm not sure I appreciated it as much as I do now. It's made, I, in fact, I even think I thought it was plastic, but it's actually glass, crystal, 24% crystal, and made in France. It's lovely. In 2004, my mother was staying in a nice facility in Provo, Utah, and nearby, there was a store that was selling this nativity, and it was on sale at the time, so I purchased the first parts of it. It's called the willow tree. It's made to look like carving, wood carvings, but it is made out of um, not car wood, cast plaster. plaster. Plaster, yeah. I love the simplicity. My father being German, I had an attraction to these pyramid type um, decorations that the propellers would go around with the heat of the candles. My parents had a number of them in their home. They were smaller. And then when we were married, I found this catalog, this Lillian Vernon catalog that had these and I purchased one for our family then I ended up purchasing them for wedding presents for some of my nieces, and I remember that. And I think I've found some for some of the rest of you over the years. I love it because of the different um, aspects of the nativity. Brent remembers that he had something to do with the burning of some of these uh, little propellers. But to me, that's pretty amazing that we have kept it all this time. It's from the late 1970s. So that's it's a good history. We kept them alive. It's been through floods and made it. In 2014, we were with Brian's family, and we love to do different little excursions after Thanksgiving. And we went to the city of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And there in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, I found this driftwood nativity that I was fascinated by. And so we acquired it. I love the sweet lines of the baby with the with the driftwood, little piece of stone, and Mary. Look how, how sweet that is. I just added the seashells because 
it made sense to do that. <laughs> In 2013, I was shopping for Christmas trees at the Red Barn in Morton, Illinois. They have a beautiful gift shop inside, and there I found this nativity. It's a classic. I'm trying to do my homework and find out who is the artist, because I see it in many beautiful um, nativity displays. I, I liked it a lot, so I think I probably found it on sale. You know me and um, purchased it for our family. It's one of my favorite. In 2009, also at the Red Barn, I found, I was very impressed with this beautiful holy family. I, I like the fabric and the sweet touch to it. I attach lots of good feelings to the Red Barn. I think I remember many times cutting Christmas trees in the area of the Red Barn, we went out on a truck, didn't we, Dave? And I think um, Amber and Scott came with us one year. And I think it was one of Amber's first experiences of cutting down her own Christmas tree. So I attached that to that nativity somehow. <laughs> In 2006, after my mother had died, I found this nativity in Peoria, Illinois. It's porcelain. It was stunning. And I purchased it thinking of my mom, probably with a little bit of mom money. And so every time I put it up, I associate it with my mom and her last years of life. It's beautiful. Looks like in 2014, this is the nativity holy family that Betty and Jean gave to us. In 2018, we had probably a, an incredible experience being able to go to Jerusalem. It wasn't a planned trip. It just worked out. My brother and sister-in-law were at, B at the BYU Jerusalem Center there and were able to give us a very nice tour of the area. One day we went to a shop that they knew of where we could buy olive wood items. I think in my mind I was thinking I'd buy a nativity. But when we got there, I saw that I already had an olive wood nativity. And I found this one. It's not a nativity, but it is of the Savior. It's of Christ lifting up Peter, demonstrating the need for faith and love of the Savior. I love this piece. So instead of a nativity, we bought, David bought for me for Christmas for 2018, the olive wood piece of Christ and Peter. And that will probably be the end of our tour of nativities. <laughs>